It's just gone 10.30 and uh, lovely to be able to welcome our congregation into the building this morning. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, great to have you with us. My name's Peter. I'm the rector here at St Andrew's Church, uh, both uh, in the building and online. And uh, it's great to have an online congregation joining us this morning as well in this hybrid service. And uh, we look forward to hearing from the Reverend Dr John Bolchin this morning, who's going to be preaching to us uh, on this, uh, in this Advent season as we look ahead. Uh, not just to the first coming of Jesus, but to his second coming. Uh, we'll have some notices uh, after our first hymn, but I'm going to uh, invite Hazel Hendry, if she'd come and light our Advent candle for us this morning. Uh, not just one, but three. It's the third Sunday in Advent. Do come uh, and light the three candles for us, Hazel. As Hazel does that, I'm going to just read some verses from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is often called the fifth gospel. There's so much about the coming of Jesus in it. Uh, and Hazel's going to invite, uh, light the three candles. Uh, there are various different traditions for the candles, but uh, the Church of England tradition is for uh, the patriarchs, the first candle, uh, for the prophets, the second candle, and for John the Baptist, the third candle. Uh, the fourth is Mary. And the fifth is Jesus on Christmas Day. Thank you, Hazel. Perhaps as you uh, just stand there, let me read these verses from Isaiah. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in darkness. In the past, he humbled the land of Nebulun and the land of Nephtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as a people rejoice in the harvest. Isn't that our prayer for our nation today? That there will be no more gloom, but there will be light. That we will be turned from darkness into light. Uh, from morning into rejoicing. So thank you, Hazel, for lighting our candles this morning. And we're going to begin with our opening words of greeting. They should come on the screen, whether you're here in the building or watching online. And do join in in the bold type. So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We say together, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Going to uh, hand over to the Needhams now. We're going to lead us in our first song, Everyone Needs Compassion. Thank you.
conquer the grave. It's a great uh, message to share with everyone today and especially at Christmas time. I'm going to welcome uh, Ian McGill, our Associate Minister, who's come to join us for a couple of notices and he's going to come and join us for coffee time as well. Yeah, morning Peter. Yeah, it's Excellent. my turn again isn't it? It's yours. It's my turn <laughs> to make it. Good morning everyone. My welcome to Peter's and those at home as well. It's lovely to be here this morning. Fantastic. I just want to share with you some uh, uh, news about our Christmas cards. Uh, so our Christmas cards are out. Uh, there are some in the foyer there. If you're here physically in the building do, um, and you're on the Electra roll, you'll have a named bunch of cards to take away with you and give to your neighbours and friends. Uh, if you're not on the Electra roll, there's a box uh, and you can help yourself to one or a bundle um, on your way out. Uh, if you're watching online, you're at home and you're on the Electra roll, you should have a bunch of cards delivered to you somehow uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, and if you'd like some, do contact the office uh, and uh, we can get some to you. And they speak about all our different Christmas services and um, it just need to emphasize the need to book. Uh, our Christingle services went live on Thursday online and uh, already they have pretty much booked out for in the building. Um, and so uh, please do book online for any of the Christmas services because they will be popular and we do have limits to numbers in the building. Uh, but isn't that exciting? Really, really encouraging as a church. Uh, and of course, the number who can join us online is, is there's no limit. So um, uh, we're praying that many would join online for the Chris Dingle services. Uh, the uh, carol service is next Sunday evening at six o'clock. So do join us for that, either here or uh, online again. And we're really excited actually to add in an extra service which isn't in the card, but it's one we've been working on the last few days, and that's an outdoor carol service where we can actually sing together. Um, uh, it's been allowed by the government and it's been allowed by the Church of England, and uh, as long as we do it safely within the regulations, we can do that. So we're really excited uh, to put that on for you on the 22nd of December, and it'll be in the front car park there. And what a lovely witness that will be to our community. And we'll be able to invite them too to join us as we celebrate Jesus together. It's the 23rd, Peter. It's Wednesday the 20th. No, it's changed. It's, oh, it's changed. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah, we've, we've moved around. Oh, things do move quickly, so, yeah. don't they? <laughs> oh, wow. So details of that will be in Tuesday's email. And we'll just confirm the timings and, uh, and the dates. But, um, but look out for that. And if, you, if you're desperate to come and sing together as the people of God, uh, what a wonderful opportunity that will be. Um, do you want to share some news about uh, the shoeboxes, in? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody, either here or at home, if you've donated a shoebox uh, for the church, as we've done for many, many years, Operation Christmas Child, isn't it, mm. that, that, that operates this. It's, um, they're still out in the foyer. We've got till Tuesday to... They're going to come and collect them um, during the week before Tuesday. So if, if you still have one and you want to bring it in, do bring it in, into the church tomorrow. That would be great because they're going to come and pick them up. So thank you so much, everybody who's donated. It, it's a fantastic cause. Thank you. Marvellous. And uh, also just to say on Christmas Day, we'll be down at All Saints. Ian and I will be there. Uh, and looking forward to that uh, at 9 o'clock at All Saints and then at 10.30 here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the show and tell this time um, <laughs> because not only will we have show and tell presents in church, we're going to be able to go into people's homes and see what presents they've been opening at home on Zoom as well. Brilliant. So um, yeah. that, that'll be very exciting, uh, and we'll celebrate Christmas together. Fantastic. Great. Thank, Thank you, on. Ian. Thank you. And okay. uh, we will come on to a time of confession now. We always uh, begin our services by approaching God in an attitude of repentance, an attitude of honesty about where we are before the Lord and how broken our hearts are and how we uh, need his love and his forgiveness. So let's do that now with these words of confession. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith, we say together, almighty God, 
Our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to turn to Heidi, who's going to sing for us before the throne of God above. Thank you. wonderful to think that we are recipients of God's love being 
poured out upon us. Uh, we can say of ourselves, God has poured out his love on me. I'm going to uh, invite Sandy Spanton now, who's here in church, to come and read our two Bible readings for this morning. Uh, let's open our ears now as we wait to hear from the Lord what it is God will be saying to you this morning through his word. Thank you, Sandy. The first reading is from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning at the first verse. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the New Testament, from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Sandy. I'm going to hand over to John Bolton now, who's preaching to us from home as uh, we gather this morning. Over to you, John. Good morning, folks. It's good to be back with you. You know, when John the Baptist was languishing in prison, because you may remember he'd fallen foul of one of the Herod family and was understandably feeling very low, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who was to come? In other words, are you really the long-promised Messiah, as I thought? Or should we expect someone else? And Jesus sent them back with this reply. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. In other words, I'm doing all the things that Jews expect the Messiah to do when he comes. <laughs> Where did they get the idea from? Well, from Old Testament passages like Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. For this is the Messiah speaking here, not just Isaiah the prophet, simply because the brief that he'd been given was just too big for a mere man, however gifted. And what is more, that's what the verse actually says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. 
And what does the title Messiah mean? Well, Mashiach, the anointed one, the chosen one, the one commissioned to preach good news to the poor and bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim freedom to the captives and restore sight to the blind and to comfort all who mourn and so on. What is more, these are verses which Jesus himself made his own just after he had begun his ministry. When he was teaching in the synagogues, healing many brought to him one Sabbath, he made his way back to Nazareth, the town in Galilee where he'd been brought up. Now they'd heard about what he'd been doing and maybe that's why he was asked to read the scriptures. After the set portion for the day had been read, he stood up to do just that and was handed the scroll of Isaiah. So he found what we call chapter 61 and read these opening verses. He handed back the scroll and then he sat down, it seems, in the chair from which the rabbi normally taught the people. What is more, he announced, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing all of which must have been astonishing for the congregation. After all, this was a relatively young man who they knew very well as the local carpenter's son. In fact, they became so incensed with the other things he since said that they, they almost lynched him. But what he'd said was true. The central plank here is to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Some have seen echoes of an Old Testament ordinance which was intended to come into practice every 50 years, what we call the year of Jubilee, when debts were to be written off and the land that had had to be sold to others was returned and when those who themselves had been sold into slavery were released and so on. A sort of resetting of the clock and relationships within the community. Now that may be so, but the word favour here basically means God's free, undeserved invitation to sinful men and women to get right with him. During a time, not necessarily measured in weeks or hours, when God's grace was in reach and available. And there was certainly provision for this very thing in Isaiah's other vision of the Messiah as the suffering servant the one who died in our place and for our sins that it might be so. Listen, surely he has borne our iniquities, carried our griefs, yet we considered him stricken by God and smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now that was the good news, the gospel. In that sense, living as we do this side of the crucifixion, the resurrection, we are living in what they used to call the day of grace and able to benefit from all this, and particularly so in that Jesus himself taught the blessings that he brought were as much spiritual as material and physical. Good news to the poor, said Jesus, blessed, that means happy, holy, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who, whatever their material possessions, are aware of their own spiritual bankruptcy, their need of God, of course. In our material culture, that inner need is often obliterated by our possessions. Perhaps that's why Jesus said it was so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's one of the reasons why, probably, for example, places like Africa, south of Sahara, is, is infinitely more Christian than we are here. Materially poor and suffering disproportionately through the pandemic, but spiritually rich, far richer than we are. And then, bind up the broken hearted. There's so much sadness in this world of ours, isn't there? Disappointment, loss, unkindness, inequality, betrayal, unfaithfulness, inhumanity in all its forms. 
I can't bring myself to watch TV soaps. <laughs> Maybe you can't either. But you know, as a minister, I've had to get involved in so many broken lives over the years that for me, they just wouldn't be entertainment. No, it's no wonder people try to fill their empty existence with synthetic happiness which doesn't last, which often leaves them worse off than they were before. So, freedom for the captives. It was Jesus again who taught us that we can suffer spiritual slavery, a slavery to sin. When we find ourselves tied up in our own weaknesses, how we think, how we react, how we behave, how we speak, and often the long trail of regret that we drag through life. Plenty need the experience of real forgiveness, of wiping the slate clean, of starting again with the power to live differently, all of which is on offer in Jesus' jubilee year. Release for the prisoners from darkness, or a better translation might be opening the eyes of the blind. The blind, of course, are prisoners to darkness. And there's a blindness that's spiritual too. When Jesus healed a man born blind, all he could say in wonderment was, one thing I know, once I was blind, but now I see. An experience which is repeated again and again as people open up their lives to God and the gospel. When we do that, we begin to see the world and life and everything in a new and different way. As one friend once told me, it's like moving from black and white to technicolor. And so we could go on here, singling out those who grieve. Just listen to the poetry, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. They often express their grief by putting ashes on their heads. The oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. For Jesus told us quite clearly that trusting him and what he did for us means that even death can lose its sting and grief its heaviness. You know, night by night, we give them the cold, stark figure of just how many have died from COVID. But I can't help but thinking that each one represents a grieving family for whom life can never be the same again. Right now, there's so much need to provide for those who grieve. But all this is only the first part of his proclamation. The second is much more disturbing. It concerns the day of vengeance of our God. The word tells us how he will deal with those who have ignored and written off his just claims upon their lives. Not necessarily in violent revolt, <clears throat> but often in simple denial that God made them for himself. And that we so easily declare our independence from him. <laughs> what we do without him, we live as though he doesn't exist. That his claims upon our lives are of no importance and that consequently we could ignore his laws and go our own way. <clears throat> and for that one day, God will call everyone to account, let alone the mass of unrequited wickedness all down through history, which cries out for redress. And Jesus told us that in as many words too. And it's telling that in the Nazareth synagogue, he omitted the second part of his commission, doubtless because as he tells us elsewhere, his first coming was not to judge, but to save the world. At the same time, he could also claim that God, his Father, had committed all judgment to him, and that one day, when he returns, all people, nations and individuals alike, will answer to him as judge of all. And Jesus was equally clear when it came to the outcome, wasn't he? Just take one, one, one example from, from the Sermon on the Mount. Enter through the narrow gate, he said. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Destruction? That's one of the biblical terms for hell. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, eternal life, the life of heaven. And only a few find it. And elsewhere he said a lot more in the same vein. Now, we might laughingly joke about keeping on the straight and narrow, but it was no joke when Jesus first said it. 
It was a dire warning. Just as when in our passage we are confronted with an equally hard saying, aren't we? <clears throat> the day of vengeance of our God. Seems a strange contrast with the first part of Jesus' commission. To preach good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to free the captives, to open the eyes of the blind, to comfort all who mourn, put together. That all adds up to Christ's compassion for men and women and young people caught up in this sinful, suffering, fallen world of ours. When he was here, we read that when Jesus saw people in great need, he had compassion on them. I think that word sums it up. It's one of the most beautiful words in the Bible. It tells us that people to him were not just cases or problems or even clients, as we sometimes have to call them nowadays. It tells us that he was deeply and personally moved by human need. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to read our own Hazel Hendry's book, Love for Croatia. It's a very moving story of how someone as genteel as Hazel could get caught up in a cruel and bloody conflict. Not because she'd gone there on holiday and couldn't get back, but because she chose to go. She chose to go and having, that is, worked tirelessly to raise the cash and fill the trucks with everything that was needed for critical relief. She didn't just go once. She went again and again, literally putting her life on the line and witnessing some of the most dreadful results of man's inhumanity to man. Death and hunger, pain, suffering, ethnic cleansing, mass and graves. Men who'd lost all that they had in this world, who'd seen their loved ones murdered before their eyes, who'd been raped, who'd been maimed for life, and the rest. Taken from her scribbled notes written at the end of hard days and when it was still going on all around her, it doesn't make comfortable reading. If anything cried for justice, it was that conflict. But if you want to know what Christian compassion is, the compassion of Jesus which should shine out through all of us in this dark, sad, cruel world, read it. After all, when Jesus left to return to his father, as Jesus, as, as Hazel would remind us, he made us his representatives. As the Father has sent me, he said, even so, send I you. Which means that this commission, which he himself lived out for us, now falls on us, we who profess to belong to him. And it will be so, until Jesus comes back to avenge this world's wrongs and to wind up time and history. When that happens, the day of grace will be over. But take heart in God's timetable. That's when, for those who love him, the dawn of heaven will break, of which all that we may experience of God's gracious blessing here and now is merely hmm, a foretaste, an anticipation. God bless you. Thank you, John, for such helpful reflections on those powerful verses from Isaiah. And uh, lovely to be reminded and encouraged by John uh, at home. Uh, it's lovely to uh, hear his ministry continue and uh, lovely to reflect on Hazel's ministry as well. If you'd like a copy of the book, please do see Hazel or contact the church office. Let's uh, respond to what we've heard now with the words of the Creed, these ancient words that Christians have said for 2,000 years uh, describing what it is we believe. So we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. 
Amen. I'm going to uh, turn to prayer now. We'll begin our time of prayer with a song. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And then after that, Viv Hutchinson is going to come and lead us in church in our prayers. So over to Val as we begin by calling upon God to hear us as we pray. Thank you, Val. Father, this week many of us have been putting up our Christmas decorations. As we decorated our trees, some of us put an angel on top, reminding us that an angel came to Mary to tell her that she was going to have a baby and name him Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways you communicate with us. Some of us may have put a star on the tree instead as a symbol of the star that the shepherds followed. Thank you, Father, that you guide us in our daily life. We decorated the tree with lights as a reminder of your gift to us, of your Son, light of the world. We give thanks that the light eliminates our darkness. The coloured baubles we hung from the branches remind us with their spherical shape of wholeness and perfection, something we strive to be, just like Jesus. Our candy canes remind us of the shepherd's crook. We pray for all those who are lost, hoping that they can return to the flock and can renew their relationship with you. 
We hold up to you, Lord, all of our Christmas plans. For many of us, this will be a very different Christmas, away from the family members we usually spend it with. We pray for those for whom Christmas will just be like past Christmases, on their own, with no one to share it. We ask for your comfort for those that mourn this Christmas and who find this time of year very hard. We give thanks for the many services which can be found online this year, bringing lovely carols and your word into the homes of so many. We hold up to you all those who are working over the Christmas holidays and give grateful thanks for all the service they provide and for their families who miss them at their celebrations. We pray for the homeless at this time and ask that they find their way to the extra help that the charities provide, the meals, bed, someone to talk to and care. We pray that no one feels left out, uncared for or lonely here in this parish. And we ask that we are extra vigilant in the needs of our neighbours to offer help and care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Lord, for all those who work in laboratories around the world looking for cures or treatments for diseases. We are grateful that a vaccine for COVID has been found and for the start here in the UK of the vaccination programme. We pray for the smooth rollout of the vaccine so that as many people can be vaccinated over the coming months as possible, so that we can see an end in sight to the self-isolating and disruption of our businesses and home lives. Father, we ask for protection for all the NHS staff who have been and still are at the forefront of the battle against this disease and who continue to be at risk in their working day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government and for the leaders of the EU as they try to come to an agreement on the Brexit negotiations. This year has been a very tough year for members of Parliament, with very little thanks, but plenty of criticism. We ask for your guidance, wisdom and strength for all of them over the coming weeks and months. We pray for our Queen, for her health and safety as she makes alternative plans from her usual Christmas. We pray for unity in the royal family and new beginnings in relationships. We hold up to you our church leaders and the busyness that can so easily overtake them at this time of year. Father, we pray that you break through that workload and whisper your words of comfort, encouragement and love to refresh them. Give them renewed strength and a sense of your joy. Refill each of them as they care for your flock so that they are never running on empty, but always giving out with hope in their heart. In this week ahead, Lord, may we feel the joy of that first Christmas. May we look forward with hope and give us the courage to speak to others about your love, your forgiveness and your peace. Amen. Thank you, Viv, for leading us in prayer. And we continue our time of prayer with the collect, the third uh, collect for the third Sunday in Advent, which reflects on John the Baptist and the first and second comings of Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries May likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in this morning collect prayer. 
eternal God and Father. You create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we bring our time of prayer to a close by saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Going to finish now with the Bezles leading us in a lovely song, King of Kings. Over to you now. Good morning, everyone. Do stand if you'd like to as we worship together. Tom and Andrew, what a wonderful truth that the King of Kings should come to us and want to know us and share his love with us. Uh, just a reminder to um, pick up your Christmas cards on the way out uh, or do distribute them if you get a pack through your door in the week. 
uh, and invite people to join us for our Christmas services. And also just to highlight, there's an invitation to Alpha uh, on the back of the Christmas card there. We're starting an Alpha course in the new year in uh, January the 19th. So uh, do uh, make the most of that opportunity. Uh, before we say the grace together, let me just share those words from Isaiah, which I think speak to our nation right now and speak to us too. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Let's pray that that day will come for our nation and for ourselves. And let's share the words of the grace together if we could have the gallery view up on the screen that'd be lovely so we can see our online congregation and they can see us too and perhaps hold out your hands and say the words of the grace together so may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen thank you do join us for coffee time after the service but if you need to go now, it's lovely to have had you with us in the building or online. And God bless you. Take care in the week ahead. Lovely to see you, and uh, it'd be nice to uh, have any uh, comments on the chat if you want to uh, update us as to how the week's gone or ask for any prayer that we could pray for as a church family, uh, or perhaps uh, show us your favourite Christmas decoration. I wonder if your decorations are up. Maybe you could um, grab your favourite 
Christmas decoration. Yeah. And uh, just put yeah. it on the, on the screen and tell us a bit about it. Uh, it'd be lovely to hear the story behind that. Uh, and uh, we heard a bit from Karen last week with her, her little nativity. She did, yeah, figure. she knitted a knitted one, yeah. Did she knit it? Um, uh, well, I don't think so. <laughs> is, she, is she in the gallery? I'm going to get told off. <laughs> no, Dominic's shaking his head. No, <laughs> no, 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 she didn't. Uh, inherited, I think. It's an inherited piece. Inherited? Oh, yeah, right, it's an inherited piece. But, uh, uh, Great. It's good to you... see so many, so many people in, in the church as well this morning, Peter, wasn't it? In a lovely, lovely congregation this morning inside the church building as well, which is fantastic. It's good. Uh, it's good. Thank you for your prayers, Viv. Thoughtful as ever. Thank you, Viv. Bless you. Really, really lovely. Um, um, Paul and Sandy have commented on that as well. How lovely. Yeah. It's very nice. Brilliant. Thank you for the uh, intercession, Viv. Very thoughtful as ever. Oh, that's lovely. Right, anyone have a Christmas decoration for us to see? You might have to help us out, technical <laughs> team, because we, we're struggling to see. Ah, that's a bit better, yeah. Ah, oh, flick it through. Anyone? There's a nice tree. Ah, the Labras have got their tree decorated. Ah, right, very nice. It's looking fantastic, Labras, well done. It's taken centre stage, actually, isn't it? A lo yeah. lovely image. Oh, oh yeah, a big thumbs up from, uh, from Philip, Philip, I guess. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, yeah. Looking, is it died yet? Ours is dying a bit, actually. The needles are falling off. And uh, I, yours looks still pretty good, actually. So, um, I don't know if we can scroll. A, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, oh, Chris, Chris Wayne's um, Chris Wayne's, Chris Wayne's um, showing some flowers. Yeah. From my granddaughter Laura in Italy. Oh, oh fantastic! Lovely. That's so lovely. We've been praying for Laura and Danny, and um, that's nice to see see those flowers sent from her. How wonderful! He starts his treatment tomorrow. Danny starts uh, radiotherapy tomorrow. Well, let's pray that goes ahead uh, as planned, so um, and that it's effective. Thank you, Chris. I think Pippa has got a. A decoration, a 1950s angel. Uh, can we, any chance we can get that on the screen? You might need to unmute Pippa if you can. It's, a, it's, oh, an, yeah. it's an angel that my yeah. grandmother's handed down to my mother, handed down to me, and uh, then I'll leave it to my niece. So it goes down to the female man. So it's yet to go up yet. <laughs> That, that is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, well That's done, Pippa, yeah, stunning. beautiful. So lovely to have things that are handed down through the generations, generations isn't it? Yeah. Really yeah, special, yeah, really special. And that you're handing it on as well, it's really, really lovely. Anyone else got a, a decoration they want to share with us or um, a, a favorite? Oh, here we go, oh, George, George Preswell. Are you able to unmute Chrissy or, so we can, we can get that on the full screen? Thank you. George, what is it? Tell us. Um, it's um, our family penguins. It's family penguins and it says Richard, Eva, George and Chris. Family penguins. A family <laughs> penguin. Isn't that great? <laughs> so that each of it, which penguin are you, George? Can you point us out which one you are? Oh, lovely. Lovely. Thank Brilliant. you. That's really special. Really, Who really gave good. that to you? Can you remember? Auntie Caroline. Auntie, Auntie Caroline. Auntie Caroline. How lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. That's great. Anyone else got a, a favourite decoration to, uh, to show us? Going to head into Zubra. Oh. Oh, what? Uh, is oh, Karen's found another. Um... <laughs> Oh, I know what she's done. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> What's this? Tell us about this. Ian. <laughs> that's a that's a, a a boiled egg shell that Karen's uh, made into one of the kings. <laughs> Am I right, Karen? I've seen, seen, yeah. seen, seen, I've, I've seen them scattered scattered around the kitchen, uh, and I've been wondering why. I've been asking why can't I throw these eggshells out? <laughs> I keep getting told off. <laughs> Homemade decorations Homemade in, in the yeah. McGill household. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I'm slightly worried about her. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out if you have an egg at the McGill's. It's great fun. All right. I think Serena's got one. Is that was that a message from Serena's Serena? Serena just said she's got one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm 
I'm being slightly greedy because I said I had a favourite one last week, but I've got lots of favourites. It's very hard to choose. Um, this one is from Sue Hayworth, and she made it a couple of years ago. And it's beautiful. It's it's an advent wreath, but it says peace, as you can see, hopefully. Um, and as I'm looking at that this year, it's just got a new meaning, really. Peace in this time of um, upheaval and and Jesus bringing his peace. So, yeah, love that. Um, and also, Sue's probably there. I think you're <laughs> going, come back. Um, just to say that Sue is a treasure. She is an absolute treasure and her creative gift um, is just so used by God. And we have so many like that in the church. Um, so thank you, Sue. I love this. Brilliant. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Serena. Sue, Sue's in the building. <laughs> thank you, Sue. <laughs> Fantastic. She's finished it, she? She finished it, yeah. Just showing us the decoration she, uh, that, that you gave her, which is lovely. George has got some, is that a reindeer? Waving some sort of reindeer around. Oh, I like that, George. <laughs> I just, um, I've just been, I just, sorry, I haven't seen, but Beth Tatchell's in the church this morning. Hi, Beth. And it's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to have you back, back here. And I just wondered, how's your experience of university been? Pretty good. It's weird. It's, it's I like haven't met anyone from my course. I've only met people who I live with and from my church. Oh, wow. Oh, that's what it is, isn't it? 2020. Oh, bless. Yeah. I don't know. You, is Beth able to cut? Do you, do you mind coming and speaking, Beth, just to share a bit? I have, oh, go on. Go on. I'm sure everyone, everyone back, at, back, back at home. Can we get that mic going, Ed? Great, Beth. Sorry to put you on the spot, but this is what we do. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, no, but it's lovely to see Beth back, and I just asked her if she could share a little bit about her experience at university, given all the restrictions in the last th these few months so sorry Beth I'll put you on the spot <laughs> right. sorry so it's like my actual course so I'm doing biology and it's sort of half online half in person which is quite nice because a lot of the courses you have to do entirely online so I'm actually getting quite a lot on campus which is nice my labs and stuff um the like social wise it's been great for me with my church that I've joined because I'm at Gas Street, which is the one that Tim Hughes started in Birmingham. So it's very cool. <laughs> um, and I've made some really great friends, like the best friends in my life in the past three months. And it's amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's so encouraging. Oh, Isn't that lovely brilliant. to hear? And it's lovely to have you back here safe. Yeah, I made safe, it. <laughs> safe, safe and well. Uh, it's really, really lovely. Sorry to put you on the spot, Beth, right. but I just thought it's so exciting to see you. And I didn't see you when I was sat down there. So, uh, Brilliant. Thank you for sharing. That's fine. Bless you. That's great to hear about, about the fact that you can engage with church even, even in these uh, situations. Yeah, well it's done. really good. Brilliant. Really, really lovely. I was just wondering if I could just say to Julie Tatchell, can you get the repair shop moved from Wednesday night, 8 o'clock? Because that's when we have home group. Can you, can you get the producers <laughs> to move it an hour or so? I would like to try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julie. Christmas special Boxing Day repair oh, shop. Fantastic. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Don't miss it. <laughs> actually, there's an amazing testimony. Really? Yeah, yeah. That, um, we were so fortunate that the couple that we helped, I'm not going to give too much of the story away, he's actually a big house. And it's a, a tragic story, but a story full of hope. And I would be so surprised if they can edit out all his references to God. Oh, wow. It would be a challenge for them to get it all out, but trying. So, wow. you know, praise be, it's, it's a good one. Oh, wonderful. So, Do you want to just repeat that? Just yeah, so sorry, sorry thank you. I just asked Julie, actually. Julie's um, talking about, oh, well, I, I started the conversation, sorry, Julie, about the repair shops going out, special on Boxing Day. Uh, and there's a rather, rather lovely testimony in that uh, from somebody about their faith. So do look out for that on, on Boxing Day for the repair shop. But thank you, Julie. Bless you. Oh, great. Quite a lot on the chat, just catching up with that. Welcome back, Beth from the Needhams. Lovely to see you and hear your news. Uh, Philip and Hazel Kennedy, fantastic news, Beth. Uh, lovely to see you home. Oh, that's all really nice. Mm. I tell you, I'm really, I'm really excited about the Christmas services, Peter. I think I'm so looking forward to it. We've got, we've got two Christingles. 
We've got two carol services, and we've got two <laughs> services on Christmas Day as well. I think, isn't that wonderful? Isn't it brilliant that the spoiled. church has got together to do that, and everyone that's taking part? Fantastic. Thank you for everyone who's making a contribution to it as well. It sounds really exciting. Absolutely brilliant. You're going to need a bit of a holiday, I think, afterwards, Might do. Maybe. Might do. A few days off. <laughs> It's going to be good. Hello, Graham and Vera. Graham and Vera. Hi, Graham and Vera. We can hear you loud and clear across the network. Going well. I wondered, are they trying to show us a, a little Christmas toy or something? Hey. <laughs> Hello. Um, it's a teddy. Came. The night before Christmas, when all through the house, can not see a it. Was stirring, not Slightly further over, Vera, to the, towards the camera. You can't quite see it. That's it. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, uh, I got to put him on. He's broken. Well, we've got somebody in the church. Might be able to help you there. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Vera. That was absolutely lovely. Can you tell us what it says? I couldn't. Did anyone make out what it? Actually... It's that poem, the night before. Oh, it's the poem, the night before Christmas. Yes, of course. Brilliant. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Graham and Vera, for sharing that. Uh, it's pretty much coffee time, or rather um, uh, breakout time. So um, unless anyone else desperately got anything else to share, if they could wave, wave if you've got anything else you're desperate to share this morning. Serena's waving. Are you, are you waving goodbye, Serena, or are you desperate to share something? <laughs> Sorry, I was waving goodbye prematurely. I, I have nothing to share. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, wonderful. Well, we will wave goodbye now to um, the uh, live stream. So if you're on YouTube or Facebook, it's been great to have you with us this morning. Uh, a couple of people in church waving and, uh, and everyone on Zoom. <laughs> Lovely to see you. And then in a minute, um, you should get an invitation on your screens to join a Zoom group uh, and uh, have a little chat with a small group to uh, find out a bit more about what's going on in your lives.